food I have upstairs. And when I got back, or when I proceeded to go down there, he was gone. And when I opened up the grill, the steaks were gone. Weekdays at 2 here on Local 3. If you are dealing with painful varicose veins, maybe some pesky spider veins, the vein company can help you look and feel better in no time. This is Dr. Tim Kleger, his first time in the studio with us. Good to see you this morning. Nice to be here. Kind of what I mentioned about the varicose veins in a way is a broader term for something that a lot of people don't know about, which is chronic venous insufficiency. Is that Correct. right? Yes. Kind of a persistent problem in the country? Very much so. There's about 30 million people that are estimated to have chronic venous insufficiency. Most people think that to have it, you have to have that big ropey vein that you see on the billboard somewhere. The fact of the matter is most people that have chronic venous insufficiency do not have a big ropey vein. What they have are usually symptoms of aching legs, tired legs, heavy legs, and then some of the symptoms that people don't always associate with chronic venous insufficiency are restless legs and leg cramps. So a lot of people are taking medicines or supplements to try to treat restless legs and leg cramps when mm -hmm. in fact they have venous insufficiency. So the term insufficiency I think is kind of important because if you just use the phrase, oh I have a problem with varicose veins, mm -hmm. that sounds almost a little bit more like a cosmetic Thing, which is not, but right. it can come across that way. Insufficiency to me points to a larger health problem, which this can be. It is. It's a large health problem. It uh, has been estimated to cost approximately a billion dollars a year in oh. terms of the care of this disease. And some have estimated there is one million work days lost in the treatment and care of chronic venous insufficiency. So we call it insufficiency because what's happened is you have valves in your vein and those valves help keep the blood go up towards your heart. When those valves don't work, the blood falls to the lower part of your leg, causes the leg to swell. When the leg swells, the vein gets, valve gets further apart. Mm -hmm. And then you just get more downward flow, which is called reflux. And that's why there's different terms for this. The insufficiency is that you have insufficient flow back through the vein like you should reflux because the blood is going backwards instead of up towards your heart mm -hmm. and then hypertension chronic venous hypertension is another phrase that some people use and that's because when that blood pools in the lower part of your leg the pressure can go up exponentially right okay so in terms of treatment because it sounds rather complicated and mm -hmm. also it extends up your leg but you're able to do this where people can't even see that they've had the surgery. Correct, yet. we're able to do this in a very minimally invasive way. When I was a resident 30 years ago, we did crazy things where we did vein strippings. Nobody does that anymore. Now we can treat this just by putting a small catheter in the lower part of your leg, putting that catheter up towards your groin, and then either filling the vein with an adhesive, which is what venous seal is, mm -hmm. or doing a radiofrequency ablation where we basically heat the vein up where the vein becomes scar tissue and is then taken out of circulation. So does, does the venous insufficiency tend to be a genetic thing? Is it more of a lifestyle thing? Well, it's both. There's a genetic component to it. So if you have a parent who's had it, you've got about a 70% chance of having it. If both parents have it, you've got over a 90% chance of having it. But then professions where you stand for long periods of time or sit for long periods of time, can also contribute to the problem as well. Obesity, age, females have it more than uh, men, three to one, and mm -hmm. part of that is because pregnancy is also a contributing factor to it, both because of the fetus being sure. a weight in the pelvis and the hormonal changes. Talk about um, restless leg, if you will. What is that exactly? Well, people that have it know it usually. They can't keep their legs still. Mm -hmm. um, there's no formal way of diagnosing it other than a uh, patient describing to you that I just, I can't keep my legs still. Uh, their partner at night might let them know. Does that it always legs... happen at night? No. Okay. Uh, during the day, sitting there, you can feel that you're getting fidgety or mm -hmm. that your legs just have to move. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people will see their physician about that and they'll be put on a medicine for it. And the medicine may work, but a lot of times, they actually have venous insufficiency. And so part of what I'm trying to do is to educate not only the public, but other physicians that patients who have restless legs may in fact have venous insufficiency. And if we treat them, 
then they don't need to be on the medicine anymore. So if you're noticing either that restless leg, if you're noticing mm -hmm. some tiredness, some aching in your leg, um, maybe even some swelling in your leg, they can make an appointment to come to you and then you can do the diagnostic. May or may not be the insufficiency, but you'll find out. Correct. It's a very simple ultrasound test. Uh, most women who've been pregnant have gone through an ultrasound during mm -hmm. their gestation. Sure. And it's a similar thing. We just check the vein. You've got two main trunks that go on the inside of your leg called the greater saphenous vein. And then you've got a small one that goes from your knee to your heel. That's the small saphenous vein. And that's what we look at. And just like a tree, those trunks have branches. And so those veins have branches as well. And both the branches and the trunks may have reflux. And we can find that out on a simple ultrasound. Thank you for the education. You're very welcome. Here is how you can get in touch with him at the Vein Company, 708-5050, easy phone number to remember. Also go online, theveincompany.com. Thanks. We're from this area. The owner is from this area. We're right here local in Chattanooga. People have run into me all the time and said, hey, ain't you the guy that worked on my friend's door? I'm going to call you guys. A friendly name you can trust. <laughs> Precision door service, a name you can trust. I'm Sean Harris, retired on my